To begin this video, you'll need a couple things. A router or a switch, the camera itself, a power adapter for the camera, and an extra Ethernet cable. To begin connecting your new iServe camera, let's take the Ethernet cable and plug it into the Ethernet port. Next, let's plug the other end into the switch or the router. Now there are two different ways to power this camera. In this first video, what we're going to show you is using a 12 volt DC power adapter. I'm just going to go ahead and unwrap it here and go ahead and plug it to the other connection at the end of the cable. And it's as simple as that, just two cables to power it on. In this next method, we'll show you how to power it with just one cable. In this next video, you'll need a router or a switch that has power over Ethernet capabilities. To begin, let's take the end of the cable coming from the camera and connect the Ethernet cable directly to it. Next, let's take the other end of the Ethernet cable and plug it into the power over Ethernet port on our switch here. And after you plug it in, just wait a second, and everything went well, you should see a light come on to the left of it. Next, we'll need to plug in the flash drive that's included with the IP camera and open up the configtool.exe program. Once the config tool program is open, you'll notice at the top it should have an IP address listed. Um, keep in mind there might be more than one. What we want to do is locate the one that has the same MAC address as on the bottom of the IP camera. This can be identified by this number here. And also, you want to write down the IP address for later use. Next, let's go ahead and highlight the IP address of the IP camera and click Login. You'll notice the username and password. If they're already filled in, that's okay. If not, let's type in admin and admin. Go ahead and click Login. Now that we're logged in, you'll notice the same MAC address listed here in the green bar at the bottom. What we want to do next is uncheck the DHCP box. This is going to make you keep the same IP address. Once you're done, go ahead and click Save and go ahead and click OK on the confirmation. Next, what we'll need to do is configure our ActiveX settings for Internet Explorer. Let's go ahead and open it up and click Tools at the top, and then go down to Internet Options at the very bottom. Here you'll notice the Security tab at the top. Go ahead and click on that one, and look at the bottom, there should be a button that says Custom Level. Let's go ahead and click that. Now once we're in the Security Settings window, let's scroll down until we see the ActiveX settings. Keep scrolling through them here. And there's three specific ones that we need to concentrate on. Download signed ActiveX controls, download unsigned ActiveX controls, and initialize and script ActiveX controls not marked as safe for scripting. You need to make sure all three of those are set to the prompt option. And after we set all three of those to prompt, Let's click OK at the bottom, and yes on the confirmation. And then go ahead and click OK to exit out of the Internet Options window. Now we're going to see if we can log in through our browser. Remember the IP that we wrote down earlier? Let's type that into the URL bar. And once you have that typed in, press Enter. And here you should see the web service login page. For the username, let's keep that admin. And for the password, let's also put admin. And click login. Now that we're logged into the web service screen, you'll notice an ActiveX message at the bottom of the screen. What we're going to do is click allow on that, and you will be logged out. Retype the password, and let's click login one more time. Now once we're inside the web service screen, you'll notice you should have a picture now. Let's go ahead and click the Set tab at the top. And on the left hand side of the screen, let's click on Video. Once we click on Video, you'll notice another ActiveX message at the bottom of the screen. Go ahead and click Allow one more time on this one. It will log you out again, but keep in mind, once we go through these, you won't have to put them in again, unless the IP address of the camera changes. After you type in the password, go ahead and hit login. 
if the IP address of the camera does change, you might have to go through and allow those ActiveX settings one more time. But generally, this shouldn't be a problem. Now that we're back in the web service screen, let's click the Set tab one more time. Then let's we'll scroll to the left and click on Video. You'll notice one more ActiveX message at the bottom. Go ahead and click Allow on that one and log back in one more time. You'll notice here we went back to the video tab and there is no ActiveX message at the bottom. And that concludes our tutorial for the iServe ESIP MP2 DM1.